And this is what is, is being prophesied that's going to happen in Isaiah chapter 8, saying, hey, this place is getting dark, and people are cursing God. People are, are blaming the king. They're not looking at themselves. But you know what? The people that walked in darkness have seen a great light. They that dwell in the land of the shadow of death, upon them hath the light shine. Let's go back to Isaiah 9, verse number 3. I have a lot to go through tonight, and, and I'm going to try to go through as quickly as possible. I might have to skip over a few things for sake of time, because there's one particular passage, the most famous passage, Isaiah 9, 6, that I'm going to spend quite a bit of time on in just a few minutes here, because it's extremely important. I want to give a proper explanation on that verse, just so that there is clarity for everybody here, since there, you know, relatively recently there's been uh, so, you know, people who have been spreading confusion on this issue. But let's keep reading. Verse number three, the Bible reads, Thou hast multiplied the nation and not increased the joy. They joy before thee according to the joy in harvest, and as men rejoice when they divide the spoil. For thou hast broken the yoke of his burden, and the staff of his shoulder, the rod of his oppressor, as in the day of Midian. This is the, uh, I think this is continuing with this prophecy of Jesus Christ who's shining the light, being the one who breaks the yoke of his burden right? He, he, his yoke is easy, and his burden is light, and, you know, carrying around that, that sin burden and that sin punishment of death and hell and, you know, trying to obey the law to, to keep your, you know, to get to be saved or anything like that, that's a big burden. It's big because no one can carry that burden. We're, we're not capable of being able to live perfectly to avoid hell because we're all sinners, and, and you have that burden, everyone has that, every sinner has that burden hanging over their head, but the moment you get saved, when you, when you receive the light, when you see the light, when the light is preached unto you and you receive that, that burden is lifted off your shoulders. So what a great burden that is that's lifted. What a great feeling it is to have that, that yoke and that burden removed from you because you've received salvation. It says, uh, for thou hast broken the yoke of his burden, the staff of his shoulder, the rod of his oppressor is in the day of Midian. For every battle of the warrior is with confused noise and garments rolled in blood, but this shall be with burning and fuel of fire. Verse 6, for unto us a child is born. Unto us a son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulder, and his name shall be called Wonderful Counselor the mighty God, the everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. Now, obviously, this is a reference to Jesus Christ, widely accepted in Christianity, I think, everywhere. If, you're not, if you can't accept this as being a prophecy of Jesus Christ, then you shouldn't even call yourself a Christian, because I haven't heard of anyone disputing this passage at all on, on the prophetical nature of it, talking about Jesus Christ being the child that's born, and the government shall be upon his shoulder. Now, an interesting fact here. The word government is not found in Scripture very many times. The word government is actually only found four times in the Bible. Twice in this chapter is the word government used. Once in chapter 22 of Isaiah, and I'm going to get there a little bit later, so just, just keep that in mind, which is also uh, a reference with Jesus Christ. But the reason why I'm bringing all this up is because the other place that it talks about this out of these three times in Isaiah it's brought up once in 2 Peter chapter 2 that talks about how reprobates despise government. They despise government. And, you know, people say, well, I don't really like the government, right? Well, that's not the same thing. That's not the same government that it's talking about. Now, on the one end, you can say, yes, it is. I mean, the, you know, reprobates, I think, don't like, they don't like being governed at all. But they also like to use government and use the power like big bullies to try to silence everyone else. But the government they really don't like and the one they really despise, it's not the human government. It's Jesus' government. It, it's, it's the government that comes from God. It's the law that comes from the Lord. That's what the reprobate despises. When it says they despise government, it's talking about God governing their lives because they're wicked, sinful people that want to have nothing to do with the law of the Lord. 